All right, so for this section, we are going to find synthetic division. Uh, notice this first slide has the exact same problems. Both are example one. We're going to work this two ways. I'm going to show you how to work this both with synthetic division and long division so that you can see the similarities. Um, synthetic division is basically a shortcut way to do the long division. So we'll start with that. Um, synthetic division can only be used if there is a um, x minus k uh, divisor. So it's just plain x with just a number. Notice the formula is minus k, which tells you whatever the number is that you're dividing by, it's going to be that opposite. So when you do synthetic division, you set it up as um, the opposite. I put it in a box. Some people write it a little bit differently. It's all the same thing, so whatever works best for you, that's fine. I like to put it in a box, so whatever's next to the x is always opposite. Then you write your coefficients of the polynomial you're dividing into. So here I have a 5, a negative 6, a negative 28, and a negative 2. Then you just do the same process over and over again. So for synthetic division, you bring down the first number, which is a 5, because you have to have something to multiply. So you multiply here the negative 2 times 5 and that's the number you put in here to be a negative 10. Then you add. So then I have negative 6 plus a negative 10 is going to be a negative 16 and you do it all over again. So I have negative 2 times negative 16 which is a positive 32. Then you add. 32 minus 28 is going to be 4. Do it again multiply to give you a negative 8. Negative 8 and negative 2 is a negative 10. So you just go through there. Now this answer are the coefficients of your new, uh, well these values are the coefficients of your answer is what I tried to say there. So notice that this is 5x cubed. So we go down one degree. So the, this 5 is now a 5x squared. Then you just go down in order minus a 16x plus 4. Notice I still have this negative 10. That is my remainder. So then you just write negative 10 over and then your divisor of x plus 2 and that is your answer. Pretty sweet, right? Now let's take a look at what this is with um, long division and then long division is uh, a different process that we go through here. So now I have this x plus 2 on the outside and on the inside is going to be that 5x cubed minus a 6x squared minus a 28x minus 2. Now I don't really care so much if you know how to do long division. I am just going to quickly, oh that's supposed to be an 8, I'm going to quickly run through this just so that you can see the similarities. Not really something I, I expect you to know, not really something I frankly even you need to know. If you go into upper level math, you'll need to know how to divide long division, but that's not what this lesson is about. So I'm just going to run through this really quickly just so that you can see the similarities in number to prove why this shortcut with synthetic actually works. Okay, so my goal with long division is to make these two numbers match. So I have to multiply x by a 5x squared. And I line it up. Then you distribute this 5x squared. So 5x cubed uh, plus a 10x squared. Then you subtract. When you subtract, you subtract both terms. And I get a negative 16x squared bringing down this 28x. Then I multiply. What can I multiply by this x in order to get the negative 16x squared? That will be a negative 16x. When I distribute now, I have a negative 16x squared minus 32x. Then whenever you subtract, you change the signs, and that's what gives me a 4x, bringing down that minus 2. Then I say, okay, I have to multiply that by 4 to get this 4x 
When you distribute, then I get 8. Change your signs, and that's where we get this negative 10. So it's the same deal where we end up with a 5x squared minus 16x plus 4 minus a 10 over that x plus 2. Same deal. Now look at where the similarities are in this. Let's do red, I guess. Here I have um, this negative 10 matches up with this negative 10. This 32 matches up with this 32. This negative 8 matches up with this negative 8. So that's where those numbers match up, and obviously then your answer matches up with your answer. So that's how it works, but the big deal with synthetic division is that pattern, recognizing that pattern and doing it over and over and over again. Synthetic division has a ton, an absolute ton of different um, applications. The most common and most widely used application is the remainder theorem. The remainder theorem is um, you can use synthetic division to find the value of the function. So if you notice this, we're going to use synthetic division to find the value of a function. And the answer to this is the remainder. For instance, if you were to have f Oops. Oh, dang. F of 3 is equal to whatever the remainder is. So instead of plugging in a 3 to your function and working it out, you can just use this 3, or in this instance, a negative 3, and then whatever your answer, the value of that function is the remainder. Okay, so let's do this example and see how this pans out. Remember, the only time you do the opposite is if it's next to the x. If I'm simply just given this negative 3, then that is what put, I put in the box, exactly what it is you see. The only time it's opposite is if it's next to the x. I just keep saying that just to make sure it sinks in. Then we use the coefficients. Notice here, I am missing my x cubed term. I go 4, then 3, So here it's a 4, then I'm missing my 3, then 2, 1, nothing if I'm looking at my exponents. So because we're missing this 3 value here, we need to put that in as a placeholder. So I have negative 1 because that's my first exponent, then a 0 as a placeholder, then we have 3, negative 4, and negative 5. Then you do synthetic. Start back over with that pattern again. Drop that negative 1, and I end up with that negative 1 down here. You multiply and add. 3 times negative 1 is a positive 3, then you add that. Multiply to get you a negative 9, and add to get negative 6. Multiply to get a positive 18, then add to get 14. Multiply to get, I don't know, what is that? 42, is that what that is, negative 42? Then you add to get a negative 47. This is your answer. When you do the remainder theorem, the rest of this business doesn't matter. The only thing you're concerned about is the remainder. Remember, mathematicians are not creative. Whatever it's called, that's what you get. So remainder theorem means that the remainder is what I want to go for and that's my value. I'm going to let you try it out. Check that negative 3 in your calculator for this function, and you'll get negative 47. Cool. Let's try some more. So it would be good for you to try this one. So click, uh, try it, click pause, try it, and then we'll come back, and then click play again, and, and we'll work it out together. So try that. So here we go to work it out. See how you did. If I have f of 4 is what we're really finding. f of 4 is going to be some number. So now I have 4 goes in my box and I write my coefficients. 1, negative 8. Notice I'm missing the plain x here. So I'm going to put a 0 as my placeholder and 12. 
I have a feeling if, if you miss this one, you forgot that zero is a placeholder. So let's try it out. Drop that one, four times one is a four. Then add those together. Four times negative four is negative 16. Four times negative 16 is a negative 64. And then when I do that subtraction, I end up with a negative 52. The negative 52 is my actual answer. So f of 4 here is that negative 52. Awesome. We're doing it. Just practice, practice, practice. Synthetic division is just a pattern you do over and over. Okay, so we have these three words that mean the exact same thing, and we're going to use all of them in reference to polynomials. So the, all three of these words are interchangeable. The format of these three different words are what changes. So a zero, a factor, and an x-intercept. A zero is whenever you simply have x equals some number. So that's considered a zero. So find the zeros. You're just looking for x equals some number. Whenever you're asked about a factor, a factor is in the parentheses. So you have x plus or minus some number. So that's your factor. So factored out is in the parentheses that you're looking at. An x-intercept are going to be your actual x-intercept. So you have some number and then zero. All of these numbers that you're looking at here are the same. So if I have this number, this number, and this number, they are all the same numbers. It just depends on the format that you're, that you're given in. So I want to make that clear that those all mean the same thing. They're all the same number. It's just the format. So think about that. If I want to find a zero, you can put it in parentheses for a factor, or you can make it a coordinate point. All means the same thing. So now, if I want to determine if a specific number is a zero, then my goal here is to have a zero remainder, because I know it divides evenly being a factor and a zero. So let's try it on. Remember, the only time that you put the opposite is if it's next to an x, and this one is not. So we're just going to use the number one, and then you write your coefficients. One negative 4, 9, and negative 6. There's no need for a placeholder in this particular problem, so we're just going to write it out like this. Okay, drop that 1 down, and then 1 times 1 is a 1. Negative 4 plus 1 is negative 3. 1 times negative 3 is a negative 3. 9 minus 3 is 6. 1 times 6 is 6, and then I get a 0 as my remainder. So yeah, you do that work and you come up with just your answer of yes. Yes, decide if it is, and it is. Let's try another one here. Here is negative one, so that's going to go in my box, and then you write it down. Here I do need a placeholder because I'm missing that cube term. So I have one, zero, one, negative three, and one. So drop down that 1. Negative 1 times 1 is negative 1. Add it up, giving me a negative 1. Negative 1 times negative 1 is a positive 1. Add it up, giving me a 2. Then I have negative 2 here for a negative 5. Negative 5 times negative 1 is a positive 5, giving me a 6. So because I have a remainder of 6, is negative 1 a 0, a factor in x-intercept, of this polynomial? No. Because I have something other than a zero there, the answer to this one is no. And that's it. You're simply looking at the remainder. Pretty cool, right? Cool. We're going to be using synthetic division in the upcoming sections, but let's just sum up what we're looking at here. So remember, next to the x is always opposite. So when you go to put that value in your uh, box for synthetic division, it's always that opposite number if it's next to the x. Also, keep in mind, don't forget those placeholders. If you're missing any of the degrees, so any of those exponents, as you go down the line, you got to put in that placeholder of 0. Also, the remainder theorem 
is where the remainder is the value of the function. So on a quiz or a test, if you are asked to use the remainder theorem, you have to use synthetic division. You could always use your calculator to check it if you want to, but you have to use synthetic division because that's what's being assessed there. And then lastly, this is something we're going to spend more time on as we go through these next couple of sections. The three words mean the same thing. If you're finding a zero, that is also a factor. That's also an x-intercept. It's just in different forms. All right, guys. Let's do this thing.